Hello and welcome to the latest edition of WMC Daily. After a frenetic week of competition, we started on Friday in the Rhoda Hall with the first of the Fanfare First Division bands. And then on Saturday, of course, the stadium event started, which were held on Saturday and Sunday. We finished off in the Rhoda Hall on Saturday with the remaining of a mammoth 14 Fanfare First Division bands. And then we had the blockbuster Fanfare Band Concert Division yesterday with more special effects than a Steven Spielberg production. It was just incredible. On tomorrow's show, we're going to be bringing you all the highlights from all the competition weekends. It was just amazing and you will not want to miss it. The fanfare bands on Friday and Saturday in the First Division had to cope with Yander Hans terrifically difficult piece, Paradise Cave. Um, it was based on a visit that Jan had made um, over in Vietnam to the original Paradise Cave, which he described as a cathedral. We caught up with Jan, who gave us some valuable insights into the piece and also his history with the WMC. Jan. Thank you for taking the time out of a busy schedule to join us here today. We're here ahead of the Fanfare Bands Division 1 competition at the WMC, of which your Paradise Cave is the set test piece. First of all, must be very proud to have a set work here at the WMC, a contesting premiere and 14 fantastic bands having a go at your Paradise Cave. Tell us a little bit about the piece. Well, um, I was on vacation in, uh, in Vietnam and we visited the Paradise Cave mm. there. And Martin, that was unbelievable. If you walk in that cave, it's, it's a huge cathedral. And um, after that, it's a kind, of, a kind of museum with art made by the nature. Ah, you know? okay, yes. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was unbelievable. I was so impressed that I said to my wife, if we are back, I would like to write a piece about this, this impression. And how long ago was this, Jan? It was in 2017. 2017. Yeah. So uh, has this been a, a composition through COVID and through lockdown that you, you had the time and space to no, do it this? No, was, it was before, before the COVID. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was before. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. So tell us a little bit about the piece. And we know what the inspiration is. Yeah. But it's called a symphonic poem. And I've heard it. And it really is symphonic it's grand in nature it's big um but tell us a little bit about your thinking behind the writing yeah well the piece the, the starts with a with a big team and that's that's the cathedral the, correct the, yeah? yes and and that's also the main theme for the piece so we call it also that 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 that's i use i use all the material from that that motif that that theme in the in the piece and um after that um, it, it's a fast, a fast movement. Mm. It's quite difficult for the band, mm. for the, for all the sections, yes. um, technically, uh, to keep everything clear and, and, and ev keep everything together. After the fast movement, um, a slow movement, and that starts with seven saxophones, seven part saxophone, and, and, and that has to be played in a misterioso character, mm. you know. Mm. Then, and the rest of the uh, slow movement is quite open from instrumentation so uh, difficult for intonation yes. and all that kind of things yes so and after the slow movement we have a ripping fast music uh, fast movement um, difficult for ensemble playing uh, to keep everything straight together and the piece ends with a slow movement and the slow movement that it's a, l a very long crescendo from pianissimo to the final mm. chord mm. fortissimo and that takes two minutes so it's very difficult for conductor and band to keep the tension yes at the ending yes so i'm i'm looking very much forward to the performances of the 14 bands do you, do you think do, it. It, do you think it will be a problem jan for stamina for some of the bands because it is a big big blow Oh yes, it is. It is. But uh, I think th these bands are all in good condition. Yeah. They made a lot of rehearsals. Mm -hmm. Some rehearsed last weeks every day. So 
I think they have a lot of condition. So in terms of the challenges for the bands in this piece, where would you think the main areas that the bands need to look at? Well, the, the saxophone part, I told yes. you the seven yeah. part saxophone, that's, uh, that's tricky. So uh, th 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 every instrument has the same sound, that sure. you have the right sure. balance, yes. you know, and, and ensemble playing must be well, so that's not easy. The other instruments as well, I noticed a great percussion part in yeah. there. Yes, of great course. Great symphony part. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, um, I think for especially flugelhorns are not easy, not easy, you have mm. to play a lot of notes. But but that not, that not a lot, the notes are not the biggest problem. It is to make music. Yes. In the middle yes. movement and also at the end. Yes. To keep the tension, to Ex play expressive. Exactly. I've noticed in a lot of fanfare band compositions and arrangements now, they differ from the brass band world in they don't feature many solos. It's more about harmony, yeah. about balance, about tuning, and about ensemble playing. Have you slipped in? Any little solos that we need to look out for? Yeah, there are some so for solos, but not not big solos. Mm. No, mm. It's, it's a kind of tradition in in writing, you yes. know. Yes. And 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 of course you have the tradition in the brass band world is the contests, and so you you need you need solos, mm. you need split notes, you need yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the jury. <laughs> well, we have enough of those. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. So th this is just your latest adventure with the WMC. What were your first involvements and your first memories of WMC? Because we're celebrating 70 years of WMC this year. Yes, that's right. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, WMC uh, is, is, is for me very special. Um, we are from the same year. I'm born in 1951. Of course, yes. And the first contest yes. was also in, in, in 51. So um, when I was a student, um, I was always here, mm. listen, listen to the bands and, and, and went to concerts and yes. so on. In 78, I was finalist in the conductor's uh, yes. competition. And also in the 80s or 90s, I was uh, taking part as conductor from Solibras mm. on the competition. Yes. Um, many of my works were played in that 70 years. Well, not in 70 years, of course, but the last 30, 40 yes. years. Also some test pieces. Mm. Um, like like uh, today, mm. and uh, I know I was often a member of the jury. Over the last say thirty years, you and the WMC go hand in hand. Uh, you do so much work together. Yeah. Your involvement here is huge, and I, I know that the, the the management and the board of WMC hold you in in the highest respect <laughs> uh, and, and the highest regard. How has WMC changed for you over the years? How has it developed? Well, it, it, it is, it is it, it, it's much more professional. Yes. Much more professional yeah. organization and so on. Um, and, and, and also much more events. Mm. A lot of very interesting concerts. Yes, now yes. With uh, famous orchestras, soloists and so on and so mm. on. So that's, uh, that's the biggest change. And of course, they changed the hall. Yes, <laughs> it was in, in the in the past. It was a kind of sport hall. Yeah, hall, and now it's doch, it's really an, 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 uh, a concert hall now. Yeah, it's a great acoustic. Oh yes, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, but you need you need a lot of audience for a good acoustic. Yes, you do. Yeah, yes, you do. Well, hopefully we'll get a good audience this weekend. Yeah, yeah I hope so. Uh, for your piece, particularly, yeah. it's, it's terrific. Fourteen bands, as we said, they're they're going to be doing the competition over two days. Is that difficult? for an adjudicating team to listen to some bands one day then have a break and then listen to other bands the day after that's that's not easy that's not easy because it's not only my piece there's also an own the choice, own choice pieces own as choice. well yes yeah. so you have to remember everything very good but there's a lot of space between the bands yes so they can discuss a lot and and mm. and, and but but it's not easy no no. Especially if, if you have a, a very good uh, performance in, in the second band and you have an extremely f good performance in the 13th band. Yeah, sure, so sure. To compare that. Yeah. T tell us a little bit about the, the scoring system that the jury use here. Because in the lower divisions, um, you have three jury members yeah. okay, who are just marking s purely for the music. Okay and how do you go about 
marking each band, Jan? Well, you say uh, three, but also also the concert division brass band was also three yes. adjudicators. Yes. So, and there is a, there is a little difference between between other contests in the system. We have to judge uh, judge um, uh, separately from each other. Yes. So we make our own ranking and our own points, and afterwards we compare and we can have a discussion. Okay. Uh, but if, for example, I did, you know, I did the concert division brass band, and um, my neighbor Russell Gray uh, had exactly the same order and exactly the same points as me. Yes. And our other colleague was also very close to that, so it was quite easy. Yes, very much so. Yeah. But so, so just to be clear, between bands um, or during a band's performance, there's no conferring, there's no discussion between the jury. You each make your own notes. Well, I think the plans are now for, for this, for the fanfare, yeah. that, that, that there is also a discussion between the bands. Yes, okay. Yeah. So, but you make your own notes, first of all, yeah. and then you have a joint discussion. Yeah about that yeah, about and then especially about ranking about ranking yeah, yeah. okay but th this thing goes back to what i was saying about having the contest over two days that that must be so hard to yeah. have three jury members in the same frame of mind in the same focus in the same concentration yeah. for two separate days with a sleep in between yeah. and to still rank all the bands it's very difficult yeah it's very, it would be better to have one day with the test piece and the and the other day for the on-choice program. Sure. Like the brass bands. Like the brass bands do, yeah. But, yeah. but I think that's that's not possible. No, no. For organization. Yeah. But I have the same. Next week I will do the concert division of the wind bands. Yes. And, and we have the same. They have a program of 50 minutes. Four bands. Mm. And the next day, another four bands. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well it's a good job you're a good adjudicator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've adjudicated uh, our band of the year uh, competition. Yes, and you I did. did it fantastically and I have to say I've never seen anybody go through a score as quick as you can <laughs> and find any mistakes in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> really is something yeah. very very special. Yeah. Now we mentioned earlier Jan that you are very quickly going to be 71 yeah 71 full years of, uh, of, of Jan de Haar. What is still to come from you? Well you know 70 is the new 50. I think so. <laughs> well, I'm 54 now, so I think I'm the new 40. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm still, I'm still working. I, li I like my work in, yes. in, in the whole music uh, business, and, and, and it's also my hobby. Mm. So I, I'm, I'm still composing. Um, I have a lot of commissions up to 2024. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and I do a lot of contesting. For example, this, uh, this season, I did the, the Dutch uh, Brassman Championships, I did the Swiss Brassman Championships, I did yes. the European, yeah. I did the Dutch Open Fanfare, yes. Dutch Open uh, uh, Brass Band, and three weekends in... The three weekends <laughs> here. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, but I, I, like, I like to do it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, I dish, uh, and some, some guest conducting also. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Just going back to the Rhoda Hall, um, I, I spoke with some of the jury members over the last two weekends. Yeah. And they were saying that from where the jury box position is, you can hear everything, but at the lower dynamics, the bands really need to work hard to pull all the detail through so that you can hear yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. The lights have just gone on in the hall. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like they're getting ready the first, to first band is preparing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, well, Jan, as always, my friend, it's been a pleasure to spend some time in your company. I know you're going to be adjudicating this Sunday yeah. for the concert division of, yeah. of, of the fanfare yeah. bands and seeing the technical layouts that is going to be quite a challenge for you. Oh yes, it's a heavy, uh, <laughs> a heavy one. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, it's, it's one that we're going to enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're going to enjoy your piece um, later on today and all of tomorrow as well. So congratulations on Paradise Cave. Truly fantastic work, Jan and very best of luck with everything that you do in the future. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank pleasure, you. my friend. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to my old and good friend, Jan de Haan, for taking the time to join us. Hardy Meertens is a composer, 
a ranger and conductor of international renown and he has a long history and association here at the WMC. He was recently made an ambassador of the WNC along with Yappy Dijkstra and Johan de Mai. Fantastic people and a long pedigree of service to the WMC. All during last week, Hardy was involved with two wind bands as part of the WMC Academy and the outreach programme. We had one wind band in from Slovenia, the other from a local region here in the Netherlands and they put on a fantastic concert for us in the main festival square just outside the town hall on Friday evening and here is some footage from that concert. My name is Hardy. I was lucky enough to be for a week the conductor of this project bands, which actually they performed with their own conductors, but at the end they just came together as a joint band of two different cultures. The Slovenian band, that's, uh, that's, that's a, just one band from a very small town, and the other band, the Dutch band, is a project band. They were well prepared by their own conductors. And very smoothly rehearsing with them and we made a lot of jokes in between so it's very, very relaxed because when you work with uh, young people you have to make sure that they, they can enjoy themselves. Of course there is another side to that, being very precise in classical approach, but this has to be done as well. Um, many people in the audience boost their experience of course. Because on one side you have your rehearsal room where you study, where you play, where you enjoy also yourself. But the goal of this all is to perform. To perform with an audience, inside or outside, it doesn't really matter. But this is fantastic, of course. It's, it, this is a party. Party through music, which is very nice. I have been here quite a lot of times, this version of the WMC, and I like the atmosphere. It's not like that everybody has to be quiet. It's for everybody. It's for children, it's for old age people. Uh, you can have a beer, you can have a glass of wine and enjoy your music. It's very relaxed. That's what I like. Keep music in the streets. Brilliant stuff from everybody involved in that project. For those of you who have been following all the live stream concerts that we've had in between the competition weekends, will have heard last Thursday Eric Vluemans with Ravelli Brass. The guy is just a phenomenon in his own right. You cannot pigeonhole his playing style, but my word, could he play. It was an incredible concert, and we caught up with Eric before the concert. I could have spoken to him for hours, but we had to condense it down into 15 minutes. Here's what he had to say to us. We're here with tonight's trumpet phenomenon, Eric Vluemans. Eric, thank you for taking the time, first of all, to join us. I know it's a busy schedule today. It is, yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks we're, for the invitation. <laughs> we're, we're, well, we're really looking forward to tonight's concert. Um, you are often labelled as a jazz trumpeter, and I know you hate that title. First of all, how did you get that? <laughs> and then secondly, why do people still keep calling you a jazz, jazz trumpeter when you tell everybody that you're not? Well, when people know something, they think some people like to label things. And... Uh, but I think if you label something, if you do something what doesn't belong to that label, that's wrong maybe or something, and people don't know it. And, um, but I got into that label because I, uh, I started as a classical trumpet player and then I got uh, the, my, well, everything on the conservatory in Rotterdam. I got like, I studied jazz. Yes. So and I did a lot of jazz music. I, I played a lot in the jazz scene and I still do uh, my improvisation. What I do, I learned this in the jazz music. Yeah. But People uh, who people uh, um, they they uh, how do you say they connect the word improvisation with jazz, yes. which is actually 
totally nonsense because in other in other cultures, in other music, they improvise as well. And in the classical music, at the times of Bach, the people improvise as well. Of course, you know. They do. So, that, so that's that's part of. Uh, I mean, I think that the, the Americans are very good in uh, advertising uh, them, themselves. And <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but <laughs> and 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 I, th I think they they put this in the world like a whole the jazz thing, yeah. improvisation. So I, uh, when I played jazz music for for quite a few years, I I started to investigate like other music uh, things and 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 started to play with that. I start I played with the baroque ensemble. I do these kind of things. What I do tonight, I played with uh, a, a brass bands. I I you know, like with different cultures. Yes. And um, I use improvisation in that. And when I think there's a lot of people who do jazz music, and I, I love jazz music, like in, in a lot of facets, you know, but, uh, and there's people who really, really dig this to do it, <laughs> and who really, really are into that, and I'm not into that like that. No. So within that perception, like they are maybe better in doing that thing. I think, okay, leave me. I'm, and what are you doing then? I'm a trumpeter. What kind of music do you make? Music. <laughs> Music, <laughs> music, and I hope beautiful music, you yeah. know, with all kinds of things mixed up. Yeah, <laughs> music can't be pigeonholed. Uh, it's, it's difficult. It's free and it's very it's free, yeah, it's free. and it's yeah. different. Yeah, but um, a lot of young people nowadays, they do it as well. They yes. do it as well. They mix everything, mixing up a melting pot and poof, yeah. you have something new, something different, something fresh. And I love it. Oh, it's incredible. I mean, I, I read Mozart's life history, and when he wrote his piano concertos and his piano sonatas, he used to leave big sections that said ad lib, and it was up to the players of the time to improvise. Now, that isn't That's what jazz. I mean. That's that what I mean. is yeah, just yeah. music and filling into a certain style. Yeah, and well, it's, it's, it's totally... It's totally not important no. to label. It's no. not important. It's in it. It's in the way of music. Very yeah. often, I guess. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. So, what can we expect tonight from your performance with Ravelli Brass? Nice music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm. I'm. Um, I was invited by by the orchestra, the Gelders Orchest, which is called Film right now. Yeah. Uh, by the the brass players who are there tonight to do a program with them. A lunch program for the Sunday morning. Nice. <clears throat> so I wrote uh, one hour music, and um, and then they wanted more. So we did more, and we did just a little bit more, and we were all so enthusiastic that we recorded an album, which is going to be re released like in the in the spring of next year. Wonderful. Yeah, and yeah, we are just there with with my repertoire. I wrote it, and um, I think it's it's a. It's a, it's also a mixture. It's it's my music or how I think in music, and I'm I'm the improviser. There's another. There's a great trombone player, Jilt Jansma. He is also he's a great improviser as well, and he has a few solos. And uh, but I do the most the solo parts. Yeah. And uh, brass music. You know what is so nice that um, um, that I was like uh, ten years ago. I was in the concertgebouw. I was uh, in a serial in the concertgebouw yes. uh, with uh, the, the, the marine band of the Dutch Navy. And I was there and they were never invited. But because I had a few concerts, I could invite them. But they were never invited. And I think that the brass music is not so popular at all. Not, uh, not as violence, you know. No. And there were people who said, well, after the concert, well, we've had this with the, with, with the brass players. Now let, let the violence come back. And what is this, you know? <laughs> what, 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 what is this, you know? So I thought, I thought a, a part of me wants to say to the people, Bra violence, violence are beautiful, but brass players, but brass is as beautiful and maybe more beautiful. You know, that's a joke, of course. Of, but of course. But, but to tell the world, beyond brass music, you can, you, you can do so much with, with, with brass. And, and, and that's what I try to tell the people. Of course, it's advertisement, brass music. Also, to, to I hope that uh, children are like the music that, yes. that we make, to, that they pick, 
pick a horn as well to, to or a violin. I mean, it's, it's, it's of course, it, it's that, that you want to make yourself happy. And because you make yourself happy with the music you make, you make the people happy. And I hope it, it, it gives inspiration um, in life. Absolutely. We, we spoke last week with Johan de Mai. Oh, yeah. Who you, you know very well. Yeah. And he was <coughs> telling us that during COVID, and he had a lockdown period, he was more productive. And his true inner self came out. During COVID, have you done a lot of writing? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I was, has uh, your style <coughs> changed during yeah, COVID? Yeah, I was in a little house in the woods. And uh, I thought I'd leave the city. And uh, I had to... Uh, I thought, and I, I, I put my trumpet away for six months. I wanted to experience what this gave me in, yes. uh, in, in this time in my life. So I don't know gigs, there's nothing. Uh, but I thought... Um, there is always like a record what I have to write for or something what's going on. But there's no pressure to write. Mm. But now I'm going to write for my own library. I'm going to write everything down what I like That's and I label and uh, just uh, give it a number. And then I see with whom I'm going to uh, play it. And there was one assignment and I finished this in COVID period. There's a, there's a movie uh, about... Uh, the animals in the harbor of Rotterdam, and this is going to be a uh, <coughs> this is going to be a movie, which is called Wild Port of Rotterdam. Did I say this already? Incredible. Wild Port of Rotterdam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, it's it's an it's of course it's a nature movie, and they asked me to do the score of the. So as a documentary yeah. movie, yeah. or yeah. yeah, yeah, excellent. And I did that score, uh, that and I wrote, I wrote actually a lot of music. What I'm, what I'm, playing now with different groups. Yeah. And I called, inner, uh, I called them inner missions. Inner mission, an inner mission. So you go <coughs> inside and then you outside. Yeah. yeah. So uh. have you found then that the move that you made from Rotterdam out into the countryside, has that given you more inspiration? <coughs> or does it just flow naturally? It flows naturally yeah. and it <laughs> gives, me, gives me at this moment. I cannot say this is more inspiration. I love... Uh, you must do in life w how it feels like. Yes. So if you feel like being in a busy city, be in the busy city. If you like to eat a lot of Indian food, eat a lot of Indian <laughs> food, you know? And that's good for your mental, for your, for your head, yes. and for your soul. And I had very much, uh, with my wife, very much the feeling we want to be more in nature. And this is, this is very, yeah. very nice now to be in. So, uh, yes, it's maybe it's inspiration for life. It's being in your flow, in your, in your own flow, in yeah. my V flow. <laughs> it sounds like you're in a happy place, Eric. Yeah, I am. I am. Yes. Wonderful. Certainly. Certainly. Um, so in, in tonight's concert, we're going to hear a, a whole host of new music that, yep. that you've written. Okay. What's next for you after tonight? What next? Yeah. Um, What's next is I met a uh, person, Yussi Rayona. I met uh, this guy who, who is a Finnish uh, guy who lived in Arabia and in um, Africa. And he plays the oud. He plays ah, yes, oud and yeah, guitar. Yes. And I wrote some pieces. And I'm going to have a tryout on Sunday. And then it's a little bit vacation for me. And in September, I'm going to the United States with Will Holzhauser. Will Holzhauser, accordion player from New York. And I, I wrote both for that project. We did like uh, 30 concerts last November in the Netherlands. Wow. And then it continues. Uh, I, I play with Egbert Derks, who is a piano player. I made a double album with him. And that's also like, uh, that's in October, November. And I'm going to tour with this group where we, I recorded Wild Port of Europe with. Yes. I'm going to, to, to tour this with a VJ who who's going to use the images of the movie. And he's going to follow me in the Wonderful. music. So yeah, so we, yeah, the whole tour. That's about the last part of this year. Yeah, you've been, all your musical life. You've kept busy. You're showing no I signs of slowing down. No, <laughs> no but uh, but but it gives me energy. And I and I, this is not only to do with music, but you know, for my my tax advisor, I had once <laughs> a conversation. <laughs> what is so inspirational for you? How, how do you experience all? And he was, I was on school as a little kid. I was like 
crazy about all those numbers and mathematics and things. He was really, and his his eyes started <laughs> twinkling. Saying, "Okay, if everybody if everybody does that in his life, where he is good at and where your energy goes to, I think we would have a beautiful planet." <laughs> I well, everybody is satisfied be. with his own profession or the thing you, yeah. you, you want to do in life. Sad, uh, sadly, those people are few and far between. But if you can, if you can hone your passion, uh, follow your passion into, your, into your career and yeah. keep yeah. people entertained, what is yeah. wrong with that? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's the most important. Follow your passion. Absolutely. With this. Absolutely. Which you do. What does you do? Yeah, I do that. Yeah, yeah. And that shows in your music, though, <laughs> I think. We're looking forward to I tonight's <laughs> concert, <laughs> Eric. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Thank you. Best of luck, <laughs> and I'm sure we're going to enjoy tonight. All right, thanks, Martin. Pleasure. Okay. <laughs> Our huge thanks to Eric for joining us, and thank you to him for a fantastic concert. Well, that's it for today's show. Join us again tomorrow for a show you will not want to miss because we've got all the highlights from the stadium, the Rhoda Hall and the theatre from this weekend's competitions. How the heck are we going to fit it all in? Bye bye for now and see you tomorrow. <laughs>